Hello and welcome to Nat Chat. I'm Mirella Rich. Today our guest is Angela Seeger, who is doing a health doctorate in psychology at Deakin University and we're discussing goals and goal setting. We'll be having an exciting program, so stay with us. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And also last week we, qu we kind of ended the program with setting our goals in the morning. Can we just recap a little bit just so our viewers can keep up with us? Yeah, so last week we talked about the importance of setting process goals as opposed to outcome goals. So outcome goals are when we um, have an outcome we want to achieve, for example, running 5Ks or losing 5 kilos. Now the importance of setting process goals, process goals are what we actually need to do on a daily basis to achieve that outcome. So mm. maybe we need to go running for 20 minutes every morning from Monday to Thursday, or maybe we need to substitute out our morning cereal for fruit or something like that. And the, so what we do here is we put a goal in place um, that is a process. So for example, a process goal might be something like every day from Monday to Thursday, I intend to run for 20 minutes. And so through this process, what we're doing is we're actually changing our habit. Mm -hmm. And habits are the hardest thing to change when we're trying to achieve um, a health behavior change, for example. And so when we change our habit, um, we, we use willpower and willpower is something um, that we have in a finite amount. Um, and therefore, it's best to um, utilize our willpower in the morning when we have a fresh store of it. So when and willpower we can be extended like a muscle you were saying as well. I don't that's know if you said that off camera on camera last week. Yeah, so willpower does get depleted over the day and that's why it's important that we set these goals in the morning mm -hmm. um, so that when the time comes we just have to follow it through. We don't have to use willpower to um, make the decision mm -hmm. to either run for our 20 minutes or eat the healthy food. We just follow through. Right, but then you were saying don't some people have more willpower than others and that you said something like that they they exercise it like a muscle? They, they exercise, what they do is they actually exercise where to use it. Okay. So we all have an amount of willpower and um, the people that manage to achieve the most things um, use their willpower in the most efficient way. And so what they do is they make the decisions regarding what they need, the important decisions in the morning, mm -hmm. um, and then they just follow through with their habits for the rest of the day. Okay, that's very interesting because some people, you know, say for example, we're talking about fruitarians and people doing raw vegan mm. diet some of them have achieved it but do you think maybe behind the scenes they were doing a bit of those process goals even though they haven't let on that yeah well that can be the case so for example if someone says oh I became a fruitarian overnight for example mm. um, perhaps there were process goals happening in the background um, that took took them to that point so for example Perhaps they weren't just eating um, all foods that were not of a fruitarian diet. Perhaps they weren't eating a largely fruit diet at the point where they decided to go completely fruitarian overnight, mm. as they say. But, you know, the process of changing the behaviour over time may have been happening in the background for a a long years period, yeah. even and the outcome of them becoming a fruitarian is just what we see we might not see what's happened in the background right and then what about things when when you achieve something and maybe other people around you may get actually a little bit jealous or a little bit nasty mm. that you've achieved something mm. but they don't know that you've gone through this whole process in the background can we talk a little bit about that yeah look it can be hard to see um, someone else achieve something when you've been trying and failing for a long time. So we talked a lot uh, last, last week about how difficult it is to actually change habits. So we know that it takes a long time, it takes a lot of willpower, it takes a lot of self-reflection. Now if people don't know about all of these steps that it takes, they might be trying and failing repeatedly to change a behaviour. And it can be um, across a whole host of things. It might not just be health or diet or exercise. Maybe it's um, something else like having a baby or um, progressing in your career. And if they haven't put all these process goals in place, then they might be getting frustrated as to why they're not progressing. So mm -hmm. that frustration might be about themselves rather than about you achieving your goal. That's beautiful. And that's, that's a good thing for people to know because people just don't become 
you know what they are They've, everyone's worked towards whatever they are it's not like that's everything's right. some people people get um, you know fun in this oh everything was handed to that person in mm. a silver spoon mm -hmm. it's like that expression but that person may have had to work a lot to get to where they yeah. are but they don't explain it to you but no. you know, maybe they and do. that is a saying you know we are what we repeatedly do we are our habits and so excellence or being or excelling in a certain area it's not something that you just roll out of bed one day and um, automatically achieve. It's what you've put, the work that you've put in in the background that gets you to that point. Exactly. Like I had this experience that like when I had my accident, there wasn't one doctor, one physio, one nurse who said I would walk again. Mm -hmm. Everyone completely said you will never walk again. They even were saying things like strange, writing it down in front of me. I could see them. Strange thinks she's going to walk. Mm, and one nurse wow. who was very overweight came to visit me and I said, what happens if I exercise and I really try hard? I was feeling very vulnerable at the time. Of course. And I said, what if, what if I do something? You know, exercise, won't, won't I walk? Won't I get some muscle strength back? Mm -hmm. And she just sat there and said, you can exercise till the cows come home nothing's gonna happen wow but then I did you know I did exercise till the cows came home and they <laughs> moved baby <laughs> all the way home no. and I did and so I got my quads back and I got my adductus yes. mat back and I'm able to walk with crutches but not perfectly yet mm. but the thing is if I believed her yes. and believed everybody in the medical profession who were meant to be the experts mm -hmm. then I would not would not have achieved that yeah, that's incredible. So, so you yeah, you, you had the self-belief. And one concept that we talk a lot about in health psychology is self-efficacy. And self-efficacy is the idea that you have the belief that you're able to complete a task. And you had the belief that you were going to walk again. So you had self-efficacy that you could achieve your goals. Mm. And self-efficacy is instilled in us from past experience. So it's past successes. And so people mm. with low self-efficacy who... Um, often fail perhaps may not have the belief that they can achieve their goals and so they may give up more easily mm. whereas people who have past successes they have more self-efficacy and they will um, continue on p in the purpose of achieving their goal because they believe they have the power to achieve it they believe they have the power to achieve it's interesting isn't it mm. so it's from past experiences when you've achieved in something else mm -hmm. you think oh well, i can achieve in that I can yes. achieve and if it's like you do you think oh this is a bit of a whopper <laughs> i remember i was thinking oh i've got to do acting now i've got to walk again like yeah. this is like what are you doing to me god <laughs> anyway we've got to go to a break now okay you're watching nat chat we'll be back again very shortly Hello and welcome back to Nat Chat. I'm Mirella Rich. If you've just joined us, we're here with Angela Seeger, who is completing her health doctorate in psychology at Deakin University. And we're discussing goals and achieving goals and self-belief. Welcome back to the program. Thank you. So on this topic of self-belief and achieving our goals, some people may be in a in a sad position, or they they may actually be achieving goals, mm -hmm. but they don't see it themselves. They may think, "Oh, I'm not, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not all these things." Yes. But someone outside might say, "Actually, you're doing you're doing quite well with you yeah. know, these things." So, can we talk a bit about that? Yeah. So we can be very self-critical. So we have our inner critic who is always telling us, you know, um, what we're not achieving. And overcoming that self-critic can be really challenging. Um, and some people's self-critic might be stronger than others. Um, so, but in terms of actually progressing and, and looking towards goal setting, um, the self-critic can impact on whether we have the belief to actually set goals and achieve them. So one thing that we could do might be to reflect on what we have achieved. So what have, what adversities adversities have we overcome and what goals have we put in place and then successfully achieved them and that can bolster the belief that we can achieve other goals so it can bolster our self-efficacy mm. yeah so it's like reflecting on the things that the person has achieved yeah and think, actually, i'm not too bad i managed to overcome this i managed to do this i managed to and then bolster themselves up by reflecting on their own past yeah. things yeah exactly and so once you um once you have the belief that you may be able to achieve a certain goal, then you can put that goal, you can write that goal down, for example, make sure it's a process goal. So I'm going to, for example, I'm going to go for a 20 minute run every morning, Monday to Thursday for the next month and then see how I go. 
And so then at the end of the month, what you can do is reflect back and see how, how well you have done in achieving that process goal. If you haven't done well, then identifying the barriers that's got in the way. But then if you have done well, that's great. You've got another piece of evidence that you, you, know, you can achieve your goals and you can bolster your self-efficacy even more. Okay. And have you had many experiences, uh, you don't have to name the people or anything, but mm. where people have come to, because you have done some consulting as well, yes, haven't you? Yes, of course, yeah. And um, where you've seen them actually progress in whatever they came to see you for. Yeah, look, one of the things that um, I have had some experience in is helping people in chronic pain. And so one of the most rewarding um, outcomes of helping people who have chronic pain is seeing them um, increase their self-efficacy and their belief that they can actually live a full and well-rounded life when previously they may have thought that they um, would be permanently inhibited by their pain. Um, so one of the things that people in chronic pain um, are able to do is set goals that are in line with um, you know, what is advised by different health practitioners um, and then identify strategies that helps them achieve those goals. Right, and that, then you see them on an ongoing basis and you say, well, now they're looking a lot happier now, they've, they've solved whatever the problem was. Yeah, well, what happens is that um, once they manage to achieve uh, smaller goals, so perhaps they didn't think that they were able to walk to you know, the local shop and back, um, and then managing to achieve that through the um, the process that we've been talking about, yeah. you know, setting the process goals, mm. um, then they actually have bolstered self-efficacy and they have new optimism, optimism and belief yeah. that they're able to achieve things rather yeah. than being permanently um, inhibited by their pain. Yeah. I remember I was training with um, this trainer and he got me walking, well, I had calipers on, and then I said, I really want to get off the calipers. And then he said, okay, let's try without the calipers. And I had like a bit of a mental block because I was thinking, Every doctor, every nurse, every physio said, I can't do it. Mm. And then he's saying, get them out of your mind, get them out of your mind. And we were doing the, you know, proceed, you know, the procedure to get there. Right, we were doing like yeah. going to the gym, we we're doing swimming, walking, exercise, you know, not walking yet, but walking with the calipers. Yeah. And then I tried to take the steps without the calipers. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, if I can do this, if I can even take one step, there's no stopping me. I'm going to keep going, you know. And so I took one step, two steps. And he's like shouting at me like a, like a you know, a real coach, you know, like, yeah. come on, come on, you can do it, get them out of your mind. It was like a real powerful moment. Yeah. Anyway, so I did, I took about five steps and I was thinking, this is amazing, you know, there's no stopping me now. And then I kept training with him and training with him for a while. And then after a while, he had to go to New Zealand and, you know, him and his wife and the, then they were starting a family and everything. And then I was left on my own. So I kept doing it on my own. And then I sort of felt like I had nowhere to turn. So I went back to the hospital with mm -hmm. the doctors where I didn't really want to go to, but I just right. thought I've got no one to turn to. Yes. So I said, look, I'm walking now without calipers, with my own legs, and I'm walking on walking sticks. And I got to the stage of walking with walking sticks. Wow. And the doctor said, no, nah, no, nah, nah. you've got to get back on the calipers and back on the elbow crutches because you're going to probably get knee joint problems. And I was crying because I said, I paid this guy. Like, we worked for months and months. I paid him full time to train me. And, mm. you know, I put all my blood, sweat and tears into work walking. Yes. And they said, no, 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 you might get arthritis in your knees. And I'm thinking, I don't care if I get arthritis in my knees. I want to walk, you know. Yeah. And how do you know I'm going to get arthritis in my knees? But anyway, yeah. I sort of blindly followed them because I felt hopeless and I had nobody, you know, nobody. And they were the spinal units. Yeah. So I thought, oh, well, that's, you know, I'll just follow them. And they were the experts, so mm. cool. And then I thought, I went to Medjugorje, this place where there's been having apparitions of Our Lady in Croatia and Bosnia-Herzegovina. And then when I came back, I made a promise. I thought, that's it. I'm going to walk with the caliper, without the calipers when I get back because I know I did it and I could do it before. So I got rid of the calipers and I made a promise there that I would do it. Great. And so I was in my bed and I thought, you've got to get up. And I thought, okay, this is the day I'm starting. I'm thinking, walk to the door. Just walk to the bedroom door because yep. you've done it before, like two years before and hadn't done any more training. Okay, okay, I'll try and walk to the door. The whole point was to get to the beach and walk along the beach. I thought, okay, walk to the door, got to the door. I thought, I walk to the next door, the, you know, the security door, then walk down the steps. Then walk. And then I got to the beach and I thought, I can't believe I'm doing this. I was about to hail a taxi because I thought I want to get back home. <laughs> I can't keep going. I thought, and just I had to keep telling myself, go a little bit further, go a little mm, bit further. And yeah. I would see people I know along the beach and I was thinking, you know, I don't want to let people down and in me not working my hardest kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and I think... You know, that's a really great example of that. The medical professionals, sure, they're experts in their area, but they're not an expert in you. You're the expert in you. And so 
when you go through your health journey in your life, you will come across so many health practitioners and health professionals and they've all got information that you can take and you can integrate into your own story but in the end at the end of the day you're the one who's in charge of you know setting goals developing progressing because they're not going to be there at the end of the day and guiding you and coaching you you're the one who's going to be there that's absolutely true I remember thinking that when the doctors were saying I said you're not in my body yeah. you're not in my body like my brain my soul my spirit you haven't been through what I've been through. Yes. How can you tell me this from outside? Exactly. And they're, they're using their past experiences and their knowledge, which is completely valid. And that's what they're trained to do. And that's what we're all trained to do. You know, I've got training in certain areas, but I'm, I don't know your story and I don't know who you are and, and what you're capable of. So each person needs to take the information for themselves and integrate it and, and set their own goals and have their own self-belief. Beautiful. We're about to go to a break now. You're watching Nat Chat. We'll be back with more very shortly. Hello and welcome back to Nat Chat. I'm Marella Rich. If you've just joined us, we're here with Angela Seeger, who is completing her doctorate in health psychology at Deakin University. And we're just discussing goal setting and sabotages and all these wonderful things. Welcome to the program. Welcome back. Thank you. Now, this is there's a thing where people achieve things. Someone might be achieving something and um, then other people around them may get a bit nasty to them or a bit jealous or... Mm just yeah. nasty yeah. and it's and then when you're on the receiving and you think oh, what was that what was that caused for why was that there? yeah can you explain some of that sort of thing well i mean it could be happening for a variety of reasons but you know sometimes jealousy can be the result of seeing someone else achieving the goal that you were hoping to achieve so you know in the case of um achieving maybe weight loss or a healthy diet or career progression for example um, so people might just be seeing the outcome that you have managed to achieve these things, but they haven't seen the work that you've put in in the background. And so it might be just a frustration on their part that they don't know why they haven't achieved it, given all the work that they've been doing. Yeah, but the worst thing about that is it can make people give up on their own goal because they feel like if they're causing this much jealousy or upset in other right. people, then they think, well, why should I bother? It's just causing, it seems to be causing friction in my relationships. So the person who has achieved the goal mm. might stop because mm. they're causing issues with other people. Mm. Yeah, that's a tough one because, you know, you don't want to give up on your own hopes and dreams, but then you don't want to upset other people either. So, I mean, just understanding that they're, them being upset is not necessarily directed at you. It's more a frustration for themselves might be useful. Mm. Um, it, people don't want to see other people fail. It's more that, you know, it's a reflection on, well, what, what are they not succeeding in and what, what challenges are they facing and if that's the cause of their frustration. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I've heard of people really trying to change their lives in really good ways and then they actually give up on their own progress because other, pe other people aren't comfortable with it. Right. It's not, it's, it's the thing, oh, well, no, I don't trust this because maybe the doctor didn't say it so you shouldn't do this. But they actually know it's helping them and they've actually got, they've gotten better from it. But yeah. they, they give in because they're a little bit scared or, mm. or someone's maybe saying, oh, you know, you're looking too thin. But then someone else will say, well, you're looking actually great. Yeah. And you just, you sort of, you don't want to be just swayed by what everyone else around you is saying and thinking you have to have this strong mm. inner belief, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. And, and having, you know, your own sort of ideals and values as driving your behaviour is important. Um, but also every time we have to resist sort of a negative comment, um, it takes effort on our part. And we've talked a bit about willpower um, already, but it's, again, resisting the urge to conform to other people's norm or other people's behaviour. It's a constant effort and resisting that consistently um, day after day can wear you down and you might end up conforming to their behaviour after all. Mm. So it's important that when you're um, trying to live by your values and achieve this behaviour that you've you know, you've set your eye on and that you're working towards to surround yourself with um, positive influences. And that's both in terms of your environment and also in terms of your social 
um, interactions as well. Mm. So it's like you try to spend enough time with a lot more, more time with like-minded people that are trying to achieve the same things or that are doing the same things as you. Mm. And then if you come across anyone being negative or jealous about what you're achieving, you can't really stop and explain to everybody, well, actually, there was a process to this. I had to go A, B, C. No. Because then you're spending all your energy educating everybody else in what you're trying to do. And it kind right. of takes it all. Yeah, it's, it's not a case of where we can just go out and explain to everyone who might have a little bit of um, latent, you know, jealousy or, or something like that. But maybe just understanding that their jealousy or their emotion isn't directed at you, really. Mm. It's more about them being frustrated that they're not achieving what they want to achieve in their lives. Mm. So um, just having a little bit of compassion regarding, um, you know, where their emotion is coming from. You know, they're, they're probably having their own challenges in their own life. And it's not necessarily that they wish that you hadn't achieved their goals. It's just frustration that they might be having uh, struggles achieving their own. But then they also lack the humility to say, how did you do it? Rather uh, than la like some people lack that humility, they'll lash out at you and they'll mm. say, oh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, that can be that can be really challenging. I think if, um, you know, being compassionate when you're on the receiving end of some of those of comments. Yeah. yeah. But I guess that's, if you look beyond it, you can see that that's what, what's really going on. And it does take practice. Yeah. yeah. I remember once I was running these raw vegan um, workshops and one of the girls said to me, I need you to make me do it. And I'm thinking, I can't make you do it. I mm. can't. And I said, I, I'll, do, I'll do the best I can. I can't make you do it, though. That's the yeah. thing. You can't make someone do it. Even though they want to give you all their power to make them do it, make them be what you're doing, you can't. It's impossible. No, you can't. And that's the thing. Everybody has their own journey. Everyone has their own process of getting somewhere. Um, and if you cast your mind back to, you know, where we've all where we were 10 years ago, for example, the journey that you've gone through and the amount of changes that you've had to in implement to get to where you are today. You know, every, there, were, mm. there were periods where you may yeah. have been jealous of other people. There were periods where you flourished and where you struggled. And that's the same for everybody. Mm. So just, you know, appreciating that everybody has um, challenges and times of flourish as well yeah. um, can help us, you know, maybe not take comments so personally. That's right, because I mean, jealousy is a very negative um, thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not, it's not that pleasant to be on the receiving end. Yeah, of, and it's not. It's not a nice. It's not a nice. I think it's. It's a, like a, I can't even remember. They say something in the Bible about you shouldn't be jealous. Like jealousy is a really bad thing. So yeah. you shouldn't, be, shouldn't be jealous. We should celebrate in other people's good, yeah. good things, and then and, and in if an we can't world. do it, yeah. <laughs> if we can't do it, ask them how they did it. Well, that would be yeah. yeah. That would be the best outcome humble wouldn't ourselves it? and just say well how did you do it I'd, yeah. I'd like to be able to do what you've done and yeah. can you show me how you did it yeah exactly and they might say speak to a psychologist <laughs> <laughs> i'll show you how to implement goals <laughs> hey yes well this is something that we're well practiced in yeah so it's very good well thank you so much for coming on the program it's been wonderful My having pleasure. you here thank you for having me you've been watching nat chat i'm mirella rich and our guest was angela seager i hope you enjoyed the program see you again soon